Hi, I'm Bruce Aisha, and this video is going to be looking at group and folder tracks, two great ways of helping you manage sessions. So we have here two audio tracks with drums and an audio track with some musical elements in it as well. There are times when you want to try and group elements together to make it more easy to manage the project as a whole. Now, it's useful sometimes to actually add those audio events into their own parts, but it still means that the tracks are distinct from each other. One useful way of combining tracks is to use folder tracks, and I'm going to right mouse click here, and I'm going to then choose move selected tracks to new folder. If I click on that, you'll notice that a new folder appears, and these move out slightly from, from the side here, from this inspector uh, element of the project window. It means when I click on this folder here, I can click on it, and it folds everything down into it. And you notice you get smaller versions of these drum tracks here. And actually, I can scale the size of the folder in any way that I want, independent to the size of the tracks themselves. And I can, of course, I can rename this folder and call it Drums. That way, I can just look at the drums. I can move them around in their own way. I can select the drums and basically arrange things in a much more uniform way. It also means that if I'm concentrating on other elements other than the drums in, in, when I'm mixing the track, I can just leave them up in that upper area and I can actually focus on doing some interesting things here. It's particularly relevant when you've got larger projects. Um, but it also helps you when you're actually coming to arrange things. It allows you, if you're using, um, particularly if you use colour and the folder tracks, it allows you to see what's where and move around very, very quickly. So we have folders there. And that allows us to, as I say, keep those drums arranged. We can, if we wanted to, create a folder just for this element here. And if I then create another audio track, for example, add audio track, let's just add that here and call it test. This now, you can see it appears outside of the folder. I can literally drag things into a folder by moving them in. You see that little green arrow pointing there? That is now inside the folder, and if I open the folder, you will find the audio track there. I can move audio from one track to another folder and do it like that. In fact, what I can do is I can actually create a MIDI track. Let's call this MIDI to be trying as original as possible. Because I've got that folder already selected, it will then dump it straight into that folder, but I can move MIDI into another folder track. I can move it out of the folder as well. So in essence, it's just a really nice way of keeping things organized in that project page. If I look in the mixer, you'll see there is no real mention of folders here. It doesn't group anything in the mixer. And this is where group channels and folders, sometimes the confusion can lie between thinking they might be possibly be the same thing and they might allude to audio processing. So for example, one might think that a folder might allow you to route audio in a certain kind of way, or grouping track channels or tracks might allow you to uh, navigate them in the project in a similar kind of way, but they are two distinct things. So we have folders for this aesthetic management on the project page, but we also have something called groups, which allows us to do things where we actually combine audio. So for example, if I go into the mixer here, and I select these two channels. Let's make sure they're only those, the only ones selected. I select the drums. I right mouse click and I choose add group track. Click on that, let go. And you can see I can choose a name here. And the configuration is audio output, stereo output. It's all gonna be going to here. I'll give it a name and call it drums. And you can also choose for automatically make it appear inside a folder or outside of a folder. We'll leave that for the moment. Let's not worry about that. And keep an eye on what goes on here in terms of these output of these two channels. So when I press the add track, and you can see now that these have automatically been updated. The output of these two drum channels will now go to this new drum track. And the drum track has this distinctly colored fader. If I play the audio, you'll see I mute the kalimba. The drums, if I mute to solo this one, you can see that this channel here is just going to this group channel. But this group channel then is going to the main outputs. So you're combining the output of this and this into one place. 
So the plumbing analogy is that you're routing, effectively you're combining two pipes together into their own distinct channel and then that then is going to the output channel. The reason you might want to do this is there are times even though you can apply compression, you could apply the same compression on the same EQ across two or more channels, there are times when you want to combine things before you then apply that processing. So it can be a management thing, it's quite an interesting way of managing a mix that once you've got the levels and you've got a nice drum mix going, you set the sounds to go through their own group. It means if you need to change the level of the drums, you can just move that drum fader. So for example, I can play the track, and if the drums are too loud, all the drums, I can bring them down in level or I can bring them up. It means I don't have to adjust all the individual faders together so I can use it for that, but it also allows me to apply other sorts of processing. So for example, if I wanted to apply some filtering or some dynamics, compression for example, or an EQ across everything, so say all my drums were perhaps a little bit too dull, I could then apply the EQ across all of them together and it will treat all of them at the same time. So you can see how groups are very, very useful for achieving both project management in terms of the mixer, but also allowing you to do some interesting processing as well. So we've looked at folders and we've looked at groups and we've seen how they're distinct. Folders being used for aesthetic management, particularly on the project page, and they don't actually really, aren't really reflected in terms of what you actually see in the mixer. And group tracks, which allow you to manage where the audio goes and channel audio into distinct areas, distinct boxes in effect, for separate processing, separate leveling, and allow you to manage the track in audio terms.